بسم الله والحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين. We praise Allah subhanahu wa taala. We thank Him upon upon all conditions. We send blessings and salutations upon Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and we ask Allah to forgive our shortcomings and to grant us goodness. Amin. Amin. My beloved brothers and sisters, it is the duty of every single one of us to spread the goodness that we have. It is prohibited to enjoy goodness yourself. If you're a Muslim and Allah has blessed you with something, you have to think about how to share that. There's no other way. Otherwise, you're not a Muslim. One of the pillars of Islam is zakat. Zakat means you got money. You're not a Muslim unless you share that money. Do you understand what that means? So if Allah's given you a hundred pounds, for example, and you have the nisab and a year passes, if, you do, if you're not prepared to share some of it with those who don't have it, you're not a Muslim. So people don't look at it this way and they don't realize that Allah wants from us to share the goodness that we have as part of your faith. I want to ask you a simple question. What is more important, your money or your faith? Your faith. So if it is so important to share money, do you not think it will be even more important to share your faith? So if you have goodness, the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, says, Balligu anni walau ayah. You have to convey from me to others, even if you know a single verse. It's your duty. You cannot be considered a true Muslim if you yourself are enjoying the beauty of Islam and you're not prepared to share it with others in some way, shape or form. Not everyone is knowledgeable, but everyone knows a little. If I were to ask you, how many pillars are there of Islam? All of us will say five pillars. You know that much. Can't you share that? Subhanallah. If someone were to ask you about the Quran, what do you know of it? The little knowledge that you do have. So yes, it is a condition of conveying a message or teaching others that you know what you're talking about. But that doesn't mean you need to know everything. You need to share whatever you have. If you have, for example, a little, a small piece of knowledge, a little detail of the hadith of the Prophet ﷺ, Wallahi, it's your duty to share it. So how do I share it? Number one, Allah will allow you to mix with and interact with certain people throughout your life. Every single person that you came across, Allah is going to ask you, what did you do? With them, for them, to them, about them, and so on. Did you share any goodness? So one might think, well, how is it possible? I stop at the services on my way to Blackburn, for example, and there are 50 people there, 100, maybe more, and I come across them or they see me. How on earth am I supposed to spread goodness there? The answer is, at least by the way you carry yourself. Allahu Akbar. Your character, your conduct, it should show a slight smile on your face. Helpfulness, you're helpful if you see an opportunity to assist anyone. You rush to it, that is your Islam. That is your Prophet, may Allah's peace and blessings be on him. He is the Nabi of Allah, the one we follow, the one whom we enter the fold of Islam by declaring that he is the Messenger of Allah. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So, you carry yourself in a beautiful way. And the bare minimum is you don't cause harm to others. That's something. Imagine you walking into the same scenario because it's not easy. People say, how can I give da'wah to all these people? Da'wah is not necessarily that you arrive at the highest of its levels, which is to engage someone verbally and to begin to teach them things. I may not know enough or I might not have had the opportunity or they might not even be interested. But when you see a person who hates and dislikes Islam or dislikes what you look like because of preconceived whatever it may be within their minds and hearts, when you carry yourself in such a beautiful way, what does it do? The minimum is it makes them think. And that's it. It makes them think. And when they see the goodness and when they continually see people of the same faith that they perhaps dislike with a passion, 
all being consistently beautiful in the way they carry themselves, the minimum is the enmity is reduced. And for you and I, that's a success because guidance is actually in the hands of Allah. So if that enmity is reduced, wallahi, you've achieved. So now you carry yourself well, you are helpful, perhaps you know you don't jump into the queue and you don't make a nuisance and you don't make a fool of yourself and you don't start screaming and yelling at your own kids. They watch how you are with your family. They watch the respect that you offer your spouse. They watch so much more. They begin to want to be like you. Why? Because you have the deen of Allah. That's the reason. So when people look at a true follower of Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, they should begin to feel that they want to be like that person. They see the calmness in your attitude. They see the, the dedication in how you serve your family members. And you and I know it's very important to serve your family members in a correct fashion because Allah chose them for you and Allah has kept it as a test for you. Your Jannah could be through serving your own parents. Imagine your elderly parents and you begin to push them on a wheelchair. May Allah grant them all good health. And those who've passed on, may Allah give them Jannah. But if you are to show that respect, they would probably say, I've got kids and look, this doesn't even happen. I wish I had kids like these. And then your beard is no longer scary to them. May Allah grant us ease. Your appearance is no longer intimidating. Because why? The truth has come out. What is it? Ah, oh, calm guys, man. Sober people, loving. Very, they smile, they speak with respect. Look at how they work. When you go out for, for a picnic or when you're doing your school runs, when you're on the road, when you're at work, be honest and upright. It's the minimum you owe Allah and His Rasul. Why do we say His Rasul? Because people read online and see things that are derogatory, wrong, incorrect about Allah's Rasul and about Islam as a religion and Muslims. Surely it's your duty and mine to do something about it. People think that it's going to be sophisticated. No, it's not. It's simpler than you can think. And trust me, many of us, we travel on a daily basis, different distances. Allah gives you opportunity upon opportunity. People are watching. People are looking. People are noticing. People are seeing when you misbehave. Subhanallah. On one hand. And the other hand, when you go out of your way to help in a situation that Allah has allowed to happen in front of you. That was from Allah. The same applies, you know, when Corona had struck initially, a lot of the Muslims did a lot of brilliant work. And so many people turned towards Islam or inclined towards it. And the minimum is they began to feel these people are part and parcel of our communities. And they're an asset to this nation or to the community. And this has happened in many countries in the world. So it's an opportunity. Congratulations to those who seized it. We do it for the sake of Allah. But at the same time, that reward is going to be earned. Similarly, it's necessary for us to expand our knowledge. You know, we have a center like this one here. Masjid with a composite center, mashallah. This is the favor of Allah. I believe this place was newly renovated, if I'm not mistaken. And subhanallah, it is a beacon of light. It's a house of Allah. It is a place where people are learning. Yes, it's our duty to be a part of it. You may not be living local in this area, but wherever you are, be a part of the society, a part of the community. At least go to the masjid, at least once in a while, because you might be working somewhere far, far out, especially in a country like this. But whenever you have an opportunity, go meet the people. Let them feel the bond of brotherhood, sisterhood. And inshallah, in that way, you would be able to help consolidate what Allah has blessed you with an eye. Many of us are part of a community. We feel lonely. The reason is no one cares. No one bothers. No one's ever asked me, brother, I saw you cry the other day. You were not looking too happy. Oh, brother, I haven't seen you for the last two months. What happened? Where were you? That's a little bit too late because when you didn't see them for the week, you should or a few days, you should, then you should already have asked. Don't wait for the two months. But anyway, it's at least two months is better than nothing. But imagine you're going through struggles. People of your community who are members of the same ummah, 
And we said faith is much more important than anything else. And we, we share the same faith. And you know what? Nobody even bothered ask, are you okay? Nobody bothered. So, so, so it's important, my brothers and sisters, that we make sure we are different in that way. Ask, smile. Are you okay, brother? Everything good? Mashallah, or sister, whoever it may be. We have people who are struggling alone. That's not how the ummah should operate. Al-mu'minuna kal jasadil wahid. The believers, true believers are like one body. Are you really like one body? Are you really like one body? Do you feel the hadith says if one part of a certain organ is in pain, the entire body is in pain or suffers insomnia, cannot sleep and so on. Is it really the case? I was talking to some, a group of people and one of the brothers told me, well, you know what happens nowadays? I said, what happens? He says, nowadays, even if there's nothing wrong with the body, they'll take a nail and nail it through your, your finger. Subhanallah. Whereas it's supposed to be that if there is a little pain in your finger, people should be helping you to actually alleviate it. But it's the opposite. We cause the harm. No way. You cannot be a true believer. You still need a lot of help. Do not harm others. A mu'min should not harm another. And we shouldn't be harming anyone for that matter. We spread goodness, kindness. We want it to happen. Now, I may not have so much of time. No problem. Use whatever Allah has given you to spread goodness. Some people, Allah gave them time. So they can use the time. They can go door to door or they can, they can spend their time in a way that they're physically helping. That's excellent. But some people don't have that time. Maybe Allah's blessed them with wealth. Allah's given them some money. Well, go out and be charitable and say, Oh Allah, I haven't had the time to do this, but you've blessed me with money. Here it is. This is a hundred pounds, five pounds, twenty pounds, a thousand, ten thousand, whatever it may be. As I walked in, I noticed something on this board here. And I told myself, this is actually a one minute job. Subhanallah. Am I right or wrong? Or two hours, as the little child says. Mashallah. <laughs> but subhanallah, in two hours, we should be able to do much more than this. Come on, guys. Mashallah, tabarakallah. It's a good thing. When Allah... This is something important. When Allah loves you, He uses you to spend your money in the right direction. And when your money is rejected, you will not see the goodness in something that is brilliant simply because Allah does not want your money there. It's not pure enough to be there. So thank Allah. When I was young, we were taught, just put money in every good cause. You never know which one will get you the Jannah. And I still believe that. You've been to this masjid, here's a hundred pounds. You've been to the other masjid, let's make it more realistic. Okay, for those who might not earn so much. Here's five pounds here, five pounds there, ten pounds here, ten pounds there. And don't hold back because I might not have deeds good enough to earn me Jannah. But I've tried through all the means that Allah has facilitated for me. And one of them is money. Some people will enter Jannah through their wealth. Look, we all read Surah Al-Layl, don't we? وَاللَّيْلِ إِذَا يَغْشَى وَالنَّهَارِ إِذَا تَجَلَّى Beautiful surah. In it, Allah speaks about hellfire and Allah says, وَسَيُجَنَّبُهَا الْأَتْقَ الَّذِي يُؤْتِي مَا لَهُ يَتَزَكَّى The one who has taqwa, consciousness of Allah, will be saved from hellfire. Who? The one who kept spending their money and giving it out in charities. Will be saved from what? From Jahannam. That means this person had taqwa. They may not have had so many other deeds. That doesn't mean you must compromise your five pillars. We're not talking about your farad. Farad you have to do. But beyond the farad, you might not have had a lot of time to make a lot of sunnah and nafil. You may not be a hafiz of the Quran. You might be struggling with recitation of it. You might be struggling with a few other things. But what Allah gave you in terms of wealth, you gave and gave and gave and gave. And you gave in order to please Allah. Not in order to brag about it. You know what? That place is up. If it wasn't for me, it wouldn't be up. Subhanallah. If that's the case, you've already received your word of appreciation in this world. If appreciation comes without you asking for it, that's from Allah. People thank. And we're supposed to thank those who do good. But if you're demanding recognition because of some charity you gave, that wasn't a charity. That was a payment for a status you asked for in this world. I'll give you, but make me the chairman. Uh -huh. Okay. We, you, you've given, we made you the chairman. What happened? You got what you wanted. You made a payment for the deal. The deal is over in this world. It's done. Right? 
I give you. I don't even want people to know. Anonymous brother, anonymous sister. You know, we visited a country where there, was, uh, there were donations and there was a plaque on every one of the uh, housings that the people had donated, right? The houses. And it says, anonymous brother, anonymous sister. And I'm thinking, initially, I'm thinking to myself, if a person doesn't really know, they'll wonder, this sister's donated a lot, you know? What's her name? Her name is Anonymous, you know? <laughs> She's given so much. Look, there's quite a few of these houses, all from the same sister. And I'm thinking to myself, that's how it should be. That's how it should be. No one knows. May Allah grant us goodness. They'll be surprised to notice there's a brother around the corner with the same name. Maybe it's unisex. <laughs> But my brothers and sisters, what I intended to say today and the message is for me. The message is for me to begin with and then everyone else. Let's learn to love one another. We may not agree on every matter. That's okay. We are human. We were created different in our thinking and our thoughts. But you love one another for the sake of Allah. You have to. And reach out to people. If you're taught to reach out to those who are not Muslim, what about your brothers and sisters who share the shahada with you? Come on. Are they not supposed to be closer? Are they not supposed to be? I always say, if anyone is most deserving of your forgiveness, who is it? Your family members, starting with your spouse. But when your spouse has made a mistake, it's the first person you don't want to forgive. Look at how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tests us and shaitan comes to trap us. If anyone is most deserving of your forgiveness, it's your, your parents, your children, your brothers, your sisters, your spouse. And people do the opposite. You're ready to forgive a stranger. I don't worry, that's fine. Do you know this person? No, I don't. I just forgave them. But the people you live with, you don't forgive them. They made one mistake, two mistakes. Okay, if it's toxic, it's something else. You're going to have to deal with it. But you know what, my brothers and sisters, as part of the ummah, we are closer to each other than we can ever imagine. Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu anhu and so many others. There's so many examples of how they declared openly that this bond of Islam and Iman, the bond of the shahada is stronger than the bond of blood. Even the Quran makes mention of it. Do you feel it? Well, let's feel it. And like I say, we may have differences. Every community, every family does. Every, but to navigate through that is why you're on earth. Worship Allah alone, correct and navigate through the challenges that he's put you in. He ta- Allah created, Allah has predestined, Allah knows, Allah Almighty has chosen, Allah Almighty is the one who decided. So for you, it looks like a coincidence that I'm here. Maybe it's not. Allah planned it before I was born. And Allah knew that this is what's going to happen. You know, we're a few minutes late and you know, I like to take my time. And the reality of the matter is, I'm not usually late, but subhanallah, I walked in here, saw a group of kids, mashallah, tremendous work. May Allah bless this place and all the people connected to it and its surroundings and in the city and in the country and across the ummah. And then I decided, you know what, I have to record this because I have to do it myself. So I came here and I tried to set it up here and so on. And I know it's taking time and it might have irritated a few, but in my heart I'm saying, oh Allah, soften their hearts so they understand I have to get this done. Because there are millions of people out there waiting to see what happened today at Jumu'ah. And I think it's my duty to let them have it. Say, even if you don't see the light, no problem. We could disagree. But why don't you have someone else do it? Because I want to do it myself. That's why. It's okay. And then we had a shahada. Wow. Subhanallah. That to me, brother Mark, is probably the biggest thing that happened today. May Allah bless you and strengthen you and grant you goodness and ease. And here we are talking about the love. I feel so good being in your midst. I really do feel like I'm a part of this community. I see some faces I recognize and others I don't. But mashallah, tabarakallah, what do we do with all of this? What do we do with it? We seize an opportunity to do good. We seize an opportunity to reach out to one another. Start off with dua. Let's pray for one another. Let's ask Allah blessings for one another. We have a problem in the ummah where we forget to do that. When you want to give a bad dua against someone or a curse, you're quick to remember. But to do a good dua, no. Someone did something nasty to you and you say, Allah, destroy them, break them, finish them. You know, "Ah, relax. 
That's the moment to say, oh Allah, grant them goodness, grant them happiness, soften their hearts, bring them close to us and bring us close to them and let the, let the connection be a connection of service to your deen. That's what it is. Make a good dua. And when people haven't even done anything bad to you, say something good about them. In your dua to Allah, talk to Allah about them. Oh Allah, bless this person or oh, these people. Perhaps through that dua, the alleviation of their struggles would happen. And you would only find out on the day of judgment that you know what? It was through this man's dua that actually you had a slightly easier life. Allahu Akbar by the will of Allah. And Allah is in control. That's called the ummah. I sit and I think of the sahaba radiallahu anhum sometime. And I wonder the type of connection they have. Yet moments before that they were at war with each other. They were at war with each other. Umar ibn Khattab radiallahu anhu was known as the notorious man in Mecca. And do you know what? When he came through to accept Islam, Hamza ibn Abdul Muttalib was standing at the door. And he sees this man, a bit of blood and his weapon and whatever else. And he says, where is the Prophet? Sallallahu alayhi wa The minute you say the Prophet, you know that this man... Imagine how intelligent the people were. Because you're addressing him respectfully, you're acknowledging his status. There goes. You're acknowledging his status. Where is the Prophet? Aina Rasulullah. Where is the Prophet of Allah? So Hamza ibn Abdul Muttalib was allowing him in, obviously. These were big, big men, mashallah. And he says, Oh Allah, this is Umar. If you intend goodness, let him accept Islam. And if he intends anything negative, make it easy for us to overcome him. Let him in. He looks at the messenger, sallallahu alaihi wasallam. A few moments prior to that, he was planning the murder of the prophet, peace be upon him. How did Allah turn the hearts? When he declared his shahada, the embracing, it happens in such a way that there is instant love after tremendous hate only by the power of Allah. عَسَى اللَّهُ أَن يَجْعَلَ بَيْنَكُمْ وَبَيْنَ الَّذِينَ عَادَيْتُمْ مِنْهُمْ مَوَدَّةً وَاللَّهُ قَدِيرٌ وَاللَّهُ غَفُورٌ رَّحِيمٌ Allah is all able and all capable of creating love between you and the one you hate and dislike. In an instant. That's Allah. Allah is all able and capable. And Allah is most forgiving, most merciful. Allah can create it. He has done it. So they utter the shahada. There is an embrace. The same weapon that was about to be used for something else is now a means of defense of the same Islam. Within one moment, who did that? It was Allah. Allahumma ya muqallib al-qulub, thabbit qulubana ala deenik. Make this dua. Oh Allah, in whose hands lies the strengthening of the heart. Oh Allah, who is the strengthener of the heart, strengthen our hearts upon the deen and not away from it. Make dua. So many challenges we face, my brothers and sisters, don't allow them to distract you. Be a part of goodness through the barakah of that goodness. Allah will keep you and your generations steadfast on the deen. When you have no concern for the children of others, how do you expect Allah to take care of your own children? And that's why you see a center like this, for example, you have a madrasa attached to it. Education for the children. It's not just the imam's kids. It's not just one person's child. Someone has been concerned about the children of all of us collectively. And that's why they would be happy when you send your children. And yes, there may be a thing or two you might disagree with. Like I said earlier, that doesn't mean it's the end of the world. Raise what you want. Become a part of the system so that you can perhaps contribute positively to get things done in a better way maybe. Don't just sit outside and attack, attack, attack. No. Because you might just be attacking work of Allah that is so powerful, it's bringing together so many people, educating generations. And like I said, if you can't be a part of it physically, at least make dua, at least help financially, at least say a good word, at least come and say some appreciating words to the imam and a few others. Jazakumullah khair. Thank you so much. You know, the imams of the masajid and the mu'addin, and I'm going to end on this note. 
أطول الناس أعناقا يوم القيامة المؤذنون according to one narration of the Prophet وسلم, some narrations says those who will be the most conspicuous people on the day of judgment are the muaddins the ones who called out for adhan why? when you say come to prayer every single person who comes to prayer you get a full reward of all the salahs that every one of them have made so the hadith says لو يعلم الناس ما في النداء والصف الأول it's a long hadith. It says, if people knew the value of the adhan, they would literally draw lots, fight with each other to make the adhan. But today, adhan, sometimes people say, oh, the muaddin. And they look at him as though he's one of the lowest in society. Astaghfirullah, astaghfirullah. But he will be the most conspicuous because he called people towards the house of Allah. And Allah chose him for something very, very important. And he has such a great reward. So, sometimes we don't value things that are valued. Have you ever come up to the imam or the muaddin or the people running a masjid and just said, Jazakumullah khair, may Allah reward you guys for the good work you're doing. Salaamu alaikum. And you went away. What did you do? You encouraged them. If that encouragement made them do a little bit more or made them happy, you were rewarded for it. In fact, we only pick on errors today. You know what, you guys? You put too many lights, you're wasting electricity. You know what? There's no air condition. You know what? There are too many this or there's too many. We just keep on picking and picking and picking. So your name gets written, but on the wrong side. It's on the wrong side, mashallah. You really want, you can offer something. Don't say that you did this and did that. Say, look, I've brought this, inshallah, you guys. Uh, if, you, if you feel, oh, I would like to contribute in this way to solve this problem, and that, that's the way we should do things. May Allah Almighty continue to use us to serve the deen. Every one of us, all of us, you do not have an excuse. You have to call towards the deen of Allah. It's part of your faith. You have to. Even if you don't know much, at least through your character, your smile will break through the people's hearts. May Allah Almighty really make us feel that. And I know there are some who might be sitting and thinking, well, you know, I can't really call others. What do I know? No. Whatever you have, whatever you have, you have to share it. You, c- you cannot remain with goodness and not share it.